Hey data fans, Reed here. Today we're going to walk through yet another client scenario that I was given recently where someone wanted to create kind of an input field where they needed something kind of like you can see here where you can input a single value whether or not be a year, a product ID, or any other kind of numerical value where they can enter this information and then be able to filter the page by it. Now natively none of the standard columns in Power BI actually have this ability but there are some options for this in what if scenarios and parameters that are related to the what if analysis that actually has a single value slicer type. And coincidentally, I also came across the SQL BI article that you see here that talks about how to actually configure native columns in your model to allow for this type of slicer input. So coming back to the conversation, what we're gonna do is we're gonna explore some ways to configure the model to allow for native columns to use this, which is a feature that is technically not supported by Power BI directly, at least officially, but I found it to work very successfully, at least in the reports that I built this into. Otherwise, I'll show you an alternative method, which is officially supported, that allows us to actually add an additional column and table into our model to connect be a relationship to the rest of our model to utilize for this as well. So we'll see two different ways to explore this and to implement this. One unofficial technically, which I would say is a better implementation and one official one. So we'll see both how to implement it and its use cases. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. So let me first start by showing you the output that I built out for the client. They wanted a bespoke slicer. And by that, there's a few different elements that built this out. But we have essentially a title, an indication of if a filter is being applied. Right now, the X indicates that no filter is being applied, the input field, and a clear input reset button. So if I was to put in 2022, and I can filter to that, this indicator over here changes, that little symbol goes away, and I can use this to clear it back out. Now, I mentioned bespoke, and there are a few different things that build this out. So there's a button sitting here that I have over on the right that is attached to a bookmark. I have a slicer sitting here, which is the single value slicer. I'm using the HTML content viewer that is made by Daniel Marsh Patrick sitting over here that is rendering an SVG image. I have a background behind this to frame everything, and then one more button that I'm using as well to create the frame over on the left for the year title. All three of these together, plus turning off the header inputs for these, allows me to have a nice clean interface to be able to then have for the client or the end user an experience that creates a really nice way to input a single value. So I'm gonna show you how to build this and then the two methods for also enabling this type of a slicer in Power BI Desktop, so let's head over there. So let's walk through all the pieces that are involved in this. So to start with, what I have in here, if I continue to click in, we have a button that is just simply the left title with a little bit of formatting that I've done under the styling to be able to just provide a title on the left with a bit of a different background color. Not a lot going on there, but I wanna move left to right to explain how I built out all of this. Now, this one in here, a little bit outside of the scope of going into the specifics on the SVG, but I will mention that one of my favorite custom visuals, which is free from the custom visual store, is the HTML content viewer. And essentially what I have to show you the DAX that's in here, just to give you a pink under the hood, under SVG icons, I have a measure in here. Let's zoom in just a little bit. If selected value for calendar year, return one of two SVG images that I have nested in another measure. So filter versus no filter SVG. That basically is just saying, hey, am I filtering on a single year on this page or not? And if I go to the filter SVG, I basically just have the SVG code into here that is a line path that renders that particular filter icon that you see. And then same thing, a similar but slightly more complex one for the no filter SVG, which has a few more things that are going on to there between the filter and that little X next to it. But that's how you're able to get that rendering into this when I filter, as you can see that changes it versus clearing that again, unfiltering that back out. So continuing over, let's also look at the button here. So I will show you the bookmark itself. I just have a bookmark onto the page for the year clear slicer. That basically is just updating the data and all it's attached to is it basically, when I created it, I selected this input field, I created a bookmark with this unfiltered and I ensured that each of these have selected visuals, which means that it only connects to this slicer that's over here, just the single value input, and it's only updating the data. So each time I click it, even if it's filtered to anything, it simply just resets that. Now to me, I will say the magic truly comes in with making sure that we can have a single value input on the page itself for this. Now, 
turning back on the header just briefly, if I can go to visual, slicer header, this, here we go, is a single value. Now, normally this is not available for native columns in Power BI Desktop. You could have list, drop down between, less than, greater than, but this is reserved typically, turning this back off, for new parameters, the numeric range parameter. That's what this is associated with. So let's go ahead and flip over to the web browser. I wanna show you an article. So after my client had the request of a single value input, I wanted to first see if there was any way to do that for native slicers. I came across this article by SQL BI that talks about how to do this and convert a native column to allow for this input. So they figured out a way to be able to use tabular editor to edit the properties with a extended property, a parameter metadata, where if you add this manually, you can actually essentially trick Power BI into thinking a native column is a parameter column and then using a single value slicer type. However, I do want to mention there is a disclaimer that it is technically not supported by Microsoft. Again, I've not seen any issues doing this, but that is a caveat to consider, but the article will be linked down below in the description. But otherwise, let's see how I added this in the, in the tabular editor environment. And to open Tabular Editor, you will open that from the external tools if that is installed. This can be done in Tabular Editor 2 or 3, but we're going to open up Tabular Editor 3. Now this feature that I'm mentioning to edit extended properties has to be turned on. So that needs to be done under Tools, Preferences, and then Allowing Unsupported Modeling Operations. So one of the caveats, just again reiterating that just to make sure that this is something officially not supported, but I find it still working fairly reliably. Canceling out of that. Extended properties right here for category ID or any ID column that you want to do this single value input from. If you go to extended properties and open up the extended properties window, you have an option to add a string property. And all you need to do is provide a value of this right here, curly bracket version zero, naming it parameter metadata. And if you add this to any column and save this, then for that particular column that is in your workbook, you'll then be able to use a single value slicer type. So again, I can show you as a new page example, I have my product table and I have done that on a few columns. So product ID, that has an option for single value because I have assigned both product ID, category ID, and year from the calendar table. I have assigned them those extended properties. So it thinks that it is a what if parameter. So that's the only thing you have to do in this one. You don't have to do any additional data adds to the model. You simply have to create the edits in Tabular Editor to achieve this result. Now, if you're not wanting to use any unsupported features, I also created a method for doing this. Same exact type of input, everything I just mentioned in terms of labeling and everything else. This time it's with category ID for product category. So you can see an example here, I can filter to a particular product category. I can still clear the input, but the field here is actually coming from a what if parameter that I created and then I linked back via a relationship. So the way that I did this, I will walk you through it. So we're gonna come up to modeling. Let's assume that I wanted to create a category ID parameter. So I wanna to go to new parameter, numeric range. Let's just go ahead and rename this to cat ID. Doesn't matter what your min and your max are or your increment is. We're just gonna simply add this to the model for now and select create. And now we're gonna to come to the data tab and look at cat ID. There's the column that we have. And we notice that it's using generate series. So instead of a zero and 20, we're gonna do min and max of the category ID column coming from our product table. Now what this will do is this will create a range between the two of them with the increment of one. So if I select that, we can see that there's only eight categories, so it's gonna create the range of this. The downside is that if there are gaps in your ID ranges for any of your product IDs, you'll still have rows for that. But the nice thing is after you've created this, you don't technically need your measure anymore. All you need is this column because this column is what can be used as a single value slicer. And I've already done this and completed it with my other category ID. There we have the same one, but if you come to the model and you add a relationship between that core table that you created as a what if parameter and the original ID column on any of your dimension tables, then this slicer automatically propagates the filter connections between the two of them to that other table. So this is a official way to have a single value slicer with fully supported features. The downside is you are adding one additional table to your model, but generally speaking, it's probably not gonna be that big of a table or in file size, hopefully only a few thousand rows at most that you're maybe adding to this. Uh, but overall, this is a alternative way to get that same type of a output of that single value filter, but at least without having to do any model editing as far as the tabular editor configurations for unsupported features. And the last thing that I did in here as well, just to be creative a bit with input types, I provided a few other input field options. Here's the 
more advanced and complex one that I built for the clients here at the top. But as you can see as well, I created some more simplistic input fields. And from a very basic perspective, we can also just simply have the one at the bottom as a input field that is just using the out of the box titling and inputs and everything else. And once you publish to the service, the header icons will disappear if you've turned those off, but at least it gives you some other options to see how the input field could look depending on your report design preferences or requirements. But once again, I love to continue to get development opportunities with clients where I can explore and even expand my art of possible when it comes to what can be done in Power BI and be given scenarios I might not have thought of. But the single input on a column that has some type of a number data type is an interesting scenario with some unique solutions that we've seen both from the SQL BI perspective of doing tabular model edits, also from a, let's call it officially supported scenario of actually creating the what if parameter table and then linking it back to your main table via relationship. So two different ways to implement the same user solution as far as how the consumption of this goes, but at least gives you a few ideas for that art of possible. If you like this, hopefully this is something that you can incorporate into your reports. If you liked the video itself, please feel free to check out some of our related videos up here in the upper left. Otherwise, don't forget to hit that like or subscribe button and I will otherwise see you in my next video.